Hi, I'm Dan Quigga with DQ Design. This is part two of my four part series on how to outsource engineering services. In this video, I'm going to discuss choosing an engineering firm and how to evaluate them. I'll also demonstrate a tool you can find on my website that will help you do your own firm evaluation along with a number of important things to consider in your evaluation. I use mechanical engineering services in this example, but the information applies to most engineering disciplines. And please check the other videos out so you have them all in context. Choosing the right engineering discipline. When it comes to mechanical engineering, for example, most people think of plumbing and air conditioning as their most common subjects. However, the list of possibilities touches on many subjects and industries in some way. Each discipline breaks down differently, of course, and how it pertains to your needs. Most projects require interdisciplinary skills of some sort, mechanical, structural, electrical, civil, architectural, software, along with any subset of those disciplines. And any combination of these requires an integrator willing and capable of bridging those gaps. And rarely does one possess sufficient skills to provide multiple disciplines without a team approach, which makes a firm's project manager and system important to understand. Evaluating outsource engineering firms. There are many factors to consider depending on your industry, subject, method, competition, cost, etc. And the relative experience of a firm is a key consideration. Past performance of a firm can be requested and researched if available, but keep in mind that most engineering happens under non-disclosure, non-compete, confidentiality agreements between the firm and its client. Therefore, referrals can be invaluable and how firms advertise capability without a portfolio is tricky. However, I've made a career out of it. I put together a tool you can find on my website. The link is in the description. To help illustrate a method of evaluation where you may wish to compare firms' capabilities, this tool has a 1 to 10, and 10 is the highest rating for various performance metrics. And the results are at the bottom based on your selections for each category. Some may weigh more than others due to the relevance of your specific project needs and therefore scale accordingly. Most relative factors are listed and if not, you can message me to update the tool. Evaluating engineering project managers. Who and how they manage your project is the key to success. As you drill down into the organization from the project manager to specialist, engineers, designers, drafters, etc. You'll have different results based on their composition and their ability to integrate other disciplines if needed. However, the level of initial information, experience, and method of project management should define expectations. A project manager should be able to clearly explain what their process will be for your project. There are a number of methods for project management, and almost every firm and project manager handle things differently. Because it is the client's project, they have the original vision for the result. The client should remain involved as much as possible in the process from start to finish. I found their knowledge to always play a critical role in success. The firm's job is to bring the client's vision through efficient execution. The outcomes will vary, but the expectations should be measurable and tracked consistently. Determining the synergy of client to firm is an important factor, and it's all about managing expectations so getting through design specifications together in the beginning is fundamental. The amount of information in the beginning dictates efficiency of all aspects to come. You can't have too much information. Professional engineering licenses. Professional engineering license is required for submitting plans to public authorities. It's best to retain a PE engineering service in the locality of the installation because of their relationship with the inspectors. Manufacturing, assembly, construction, installation, commissioning, and implementation. The firm's relationship with those providers plays a big role in the final outcome. Having experienced provider contacts related to your project is extremely important. You'll likely want the firm involved through project completion and to provide oversight of these steps. Don't forget to include all this in your firm evaluation. Engineering firms with product lines. In most niche disciplines, of engineering, firms have developed products to meet the needs in their market. In searching for a solution, you may have found them because of the product, if it meets your requirement. However, the product may be only part of a larger system that requires customization or integration with something incompatible, and they may not be the right fit for the overall project or bias in their offering, precluding you from the alternative considerations 
so you may need a second opinion or a fresh approach to the problem. The location of the firm is less and less important these days. Having face-to-face -face time can be accomplished via webcam, whiteboard conference, chats. However, being able to share real-world visual dynamics is important. Also, being available to follow up on the development and installation process is reassuring. And if a professional engineering license is needed, local engineering firms are better suited having knowledge and relationships with department inspectors. And arbitration of project issues such as trade secret, patent infringement, breach of contract, or insurance issues are best kept within the legal system of the client. MEP, civil, and architectural services are best found in the locality of the installation. This video doesn't go into offshore versus in country as that's another topic. So those are some of the things to consider in choosing the right engineering firm. And now that you're ready to start outsourcing, let's get a contract together that suits you. Click on over to part three of my series, which goes over the different types of engineering outsource contracts and some of the things you may want to include in them. If you have any questions or comments, please add them below and visit my website for more information. Or if you're considering DQ Design as a resource, the link is in the description. In the meantime, if you find these videos helpful, please like and subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next one.